Well, a good uh, afternoon now to you, my friends. Bible Bill here. And i um, sitting in the parking lot at the Kroger's as my dear wife goes in for a few essentials. We've got to run and get a, a prescription. Trying to keep our social distancing. Um, I was reminded of uh, a story in the book of Jonah. It's a short book if you've not ever delved in there. Many people say it's a, a picture of the gospel, and I suppose it is because Jesus makes reference of it in a few of the gospels. And uh, he relates it to those people that still need a sign. Even uh, the reluctant prophet Jonah, God was trying to get a hold of his heart, and it just goes to show how far we can uh, shrink away from God, and, and it just almost seems unbelievable after everything that he's shown that um, Jonah is still in the end of the story upset with God and um, there's beautiful poetry many have said in the book of Jonah because it has a kind of a fourfold going down a humbling uh, humiliating that takes place it says at the beginning of Jonah he went down to Joppa and this was directly after he was given an assignment by the Lord to go to the city of Nineveh. He said, Arise and go to the great city and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. And he was called to this city that would have been northern Iraq area now. And they were his enemy, and uh, he did not want to go. And so he chose to get on a boat, the first boat going to the farthest reaches of the other side of the world, known world at that time. He went down, he says, to Joppa. And then in the very next sentence he goes down, uh, with them to Tarshish and away from the presence of the Lord. doesn't sound like a very smart thing to do, to go as far away from the presence of the Lord as he should have been trying to stay in the presence of the Lord. Then it says he went down into the lower part of the ship. He's once again descending, and there's a, there's a great, I think, a warning in this story, and it's full of great poetry, even as He's thrown overboard. Most everyone knows the story. How the people on the ship were crying out to some of them, their God, they didn't know who. And they asked Jonah, why are you sleeping? Why don't you join us to pray for your God? And uh, he admits, he says, I am a worshiper of the God who made this great storm. And um, he asked that he be thrown overboard. And they tried everything but doing that first but then they eventually did cave in because uh, the storm was unrelenting and it says that Jonah went down once last uh, into the belly of the whale and down he goes and there's this beautiful metaphor of how he finds himself uh, in the valley of death the waters close in around me to take my life the deepest surrounded me weeds have wrapped around my head can you imagine that He's inside of a great fish, and he's basically gasping for his last breaths of air. He says, I went down to a land whose bars have closed around me. And it's an amazing thing because the Lord in his pity has mercy on Jonah. And at that moment, perhaps after his death, after this great prayer, God causes the fish to vomit. It's a strong word vomit Jonah right out onto the dry land and you can imagine the spectacle of him walking around Nineveh probably bleached from the inner uh, acids of this great fish's stomach maybe no hair on him at all maybe he was a pale green some people say it's all speculation but they listened to him he went around Nineveh and he he prayed that they would repent and they did and they returned to the Lord and Jonah was bitter about this and it's an unfortunate thing uh, but Jesus says in the in the Gospels and especially I look at the Gospel of Matthew and uh, when it says that people were asking him for a sign Jesus says <clears throat> you teachers that wish to see a sign an adulterous and evil generation seeks for a sign but no sign will be given to you except the sign of the prophet Jonah what was the sign of Jonah? Well, it is a picture of the gospel because it shows the death, the burial, three days as was Jonah in the belly of the fish, 
uh, Jesus, as it were, was three days, if you count from the time that he, he passed and the sun rising and the sun setting and then the resurrection, that three days, it says, the man will be in the heart of the earth. <clears throat> the men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, he says, someone greater than Jonah is here with you. And so there's a beautiful picture of how we need to not necessarily look for the signs, but the signs have definitely been given. And it's interesting because uh, these are days where there are signs and wonders are being wrought, I believe, all the time. And God is trying to get our attention. And his spirit is so gently and patiently crying out to us. I just want to ask some of us to just take this time to have some solitude and quietude that's a kind of forgotten discipline uh, of many and i'm trying to get a hold of god's ear and, and and i'm crying out to him these days for friends for family that they might turn that they wouldn't need to be like the jonah uh, prophet who would run the opposite way from the presence of god but they would obey and that they'd hear him and he's still crying tenderly He's saying, come home, anyone who's a sinner. He says, I want to receive you. It's as simple as this, just crying out to God. Say, I've been living for myself. I want to surrender my life and control of my life to you. And I want to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for sending Jesus to take the penalty of my sin. Especially think of that this Good Friday. And thank you for restoring my relationship with you. Take control of my life and make me more like you that I might follow in the footsteps of Jesus. I repent of my sins and I place my trust in you. And if you've prayed that prayer, well, that's as easy as salvation is if you really sincerely meant it. And the Lord wants to meet you right where you're at. And it won't take us having to be swallowed by a great fish either. We can just in the quietness of our heart invite him to be our savior i just want to encourage you today i know it's a, a different world out there but the lord is definitely using this time uh, to get our attentions and i pray that you would uh, listen to the words of jesus today for now this is bible bill signing off be blessed <laughs>